वेलकम टू दिस एपीसोड ऑफ द हरप्रीत सिंह शो अज के सैगमेंट में अभी तो एक एक्सकलूसिव इंटरव्यू जो अभी थॉमस मुलकेर की वो पेश कर जा रहे हैं थॉमस मुलकेर एन डी पी के नेता हैं और ऑफिशियल ओपोजिशन के लीडर हैं थॉमस मुलकेर ने कई अहम मुद्दे उत्ते गलबात की खास तौर उत्ते क्यूबिक चार्टर ऑफ वैल्यूज के उत्ते उन्होंने बड़े स्पष्ट तौर पर कहा कि सिर्फ उन्होंने ही जो पार्टी है वो इसका विरोध कर रही है तो भावें उन्होंने अपने सतवंजा मैंबर पार्लीमेंट सन क्यूबिक तो लेकिन सारे ही इस मुद्दे उत्ते इकट्ठे हैं उस तो अलावा उन्होंने जो देश के इकोनमी है और हारपर सरकार की जो कारगुजारी है उस बारे भी अपने विचार साझे किए Muslim woman uh, working in a daycare center as an educator would would have would not be able to work if she would lose her job if she was wearing a headscarf. So it was so totally inadmissible in Canada. We came out against it very strong. But we didn't stop there. We didn't just talk about being against the Quebec charter. What we did is with Julius Gray, a very close friend of mine who's also the lawyer who took the Kirpan case all the way to the Supreme Court. We offered to take the case and to defend the rights of anybody who would be affected by this charter. and the ndp itself was offering to do what was necessary to cover off the expenses so the people would not have to rely on themselves that was an important moment for the ndp to stand up very strongly against this proposed charter and though ndp came out categorically against this uh, charter but what we are finding the polls which are coming uh, that's a matter of concern because a lot of cubicers are asking or right or kind of favoring now that this should be imposed so uh, some kind of tensions are arising and there have been some instances whereby uh, some muslim women have been uh, kind of uh, openly asked to go back to their countries and all, all those th- kind of things have started happening so what do you feel about it well i think that people have to be standing up and defending the rights of all canadians and especially the ones whose rights are going to be affected negatively by what was being proposed this for us is the essence of being involved in politics you don't just talk about defending people's rights you actively get involved in defending those rights with the leadership that the ndp has been showing on this file a lot of quebecers are taking notice and editorial opinion in quebec has come out four square against the the charter almost unanimous condemnation of what madame mawa is proposing contrast the ndp's position with what we've seen from the liberal party the liberal leader went on ctv's question period and said that a federal government under the liberals would not get involved in defending people's rights they would leave that to individuals i've been involved my whole career in defending the right of minorities to be involved in the quebec civil service they're very underrepresented right now and i've also been involved in making sure that we would defend people's rights in court the federal government always played an active role under the ndp the federal government would get back to playing an active role in defending people's rights something that steven harper has never done and something that Justin Trudeau says he will not do. So only the NDP is standing up for square for people's rights. In Quebec minorities are systemically discriminated against for access to the civil service. That's not just my opinion. That's the opinion of several government studies that have concluded that there's systemic discrimination. What's being proposed here on top of that systemic discrimination is state sponsored discrimination against minorities and we will not tolerate that. Mr. Mulcair, while you personally gave a categorical statement denouncing this, but some of your member parliaments, because a lot of your MPs come from Quebec, and two of them were in favor of this, has it been sorted out, or it's still? Uh, Once we saw the text of what was actually being proposed, there is not one single member of our 57-strong Quebec caucus who's in favor of what Madame Mawa is proposing. We're unanimous on this. It's not just a consensus view in caucus. This is unanimity. In Do you think that the Prime Minister Mr Stephen Harper could have played a more dominant role in this instead of just giving a statement that yes when it gets passed we will take it to the legal uh, we'll fight the legal battle in the courts That's a very weak answer from Stephen Harper but you have to remember that this is the same Stephen Harper 
who, when he was the chief policy person for the Reform Party, wrote that Sikhs should not be allowed to be in the RCMP wearing their turbans. It's the same Stephen Harper. So Stephen Harper has a tendency to put his personal beliefs out there and you can judge him by that. I don't think that his view fundamentally has changed. He's become more of a politician, he's more careful. But when he's saying that he's not really going to stand up and fight for people's rights in Canada, you have to go back to what he said in 1991 when he was writing the policy paper for the Reform Party. He said that people's religious symbols such as a turban should not be allowed in the RCMP. I believe that that's still fundamentally what Stephen Harper considers to be the case. Mr. Mulker, coming to the NDP party as such, now you have majority of your MPs from Quebec and also with the coming of Justin Trudeau and the kind of way which is now right now, do you feel that uh, the people who had uh, inclined their thoughts towards the NDP will now move back to the Liberals or is, is Justin Trudeau a threat to NDP? There's no question that there was a, a phenomenon with the change of leader. We went through the same thing very positively right after my leadership. We knew, and I had predicted for the caucus, I said, this is going to happen this way. The next election's two years away. So there's still lots of time for people to listen carefully. On issues such as this one, people get to judge the leadership ability, the judgment of people. They saw Justin Trudeau say that he would not defend people's rights. That was right on television, on CTV question period. The NDP, when we form government, will stand up and defend people's rights. So these are things that people start to weigh. They, they look the, at the balance and they, they start to weigh. They'll see consistency. They'll see hard work. They'll see strong beliefs that are not just spoken about, but are carried through in actions. And actions speak far louder than words. Justin Trudeau's statement about legalization of marijuana and claiming that, yes, as a parliamentarian, I have also had a puff. These kind of statements which are coming from a leader of a party, what do you feel about it? Uh, what kind of uh, uh, confidence can the people have in such kind of leaders? It's very disturbing that Justin Trudeau stood up in the House of Commons and voted for stiffer penalties for marijuana, compulsory penalties, mandatory penalties for marijuana. At the same time, he says he was now using marijuana. So the behavior is hypocritical, and people will be able to judge based on that. It's a very big debate because we don't want to see young people getting a criminal record for possession of small amounts. That's what we call decriminalization. But before you can talk about going to full legalization, you'd have to have the best medical experts, the best social experts, you'd have to have the best law enforcement experts for everything from the medical effects on, the, on a young person's brain to whether or not you can detect it when people are driving. These are big discussions that have to be had. It's not something that can be done just as a matter of opinion in a park to please three people carrying a sign and telling them what they want to hear. You know, the Liberals have always specialized in telling people what they wanted to hear. But if you're telling 30 people in a park what they want to hear, it's not necessarily what the whole public wants to hear. So that has to be based on belief and a sound analysis and judgment. And we believe that the NDP shows much more solid judgment and experience and wisdom on these issues. And that's what's going to connect with people two years down the road for the next general election. Mr. Mulcair, with your party convention uh, which was held in which you brought about a lot of reforms in the party policies, I would like to know a little bit about that because now there's some concern about it. Like earlier, while it was said that uh, your approach was leftist, now it's centrist. Uh, what kind of approach is there so that the people come to know and they can differentiate between the NDP and the other parties? Well, we've always taken an approach which favors the average Canadian family. We want to make sure that workers have their rights respected. Stephen Harper's been attacking workers, trying to bring wages down, working conditions down across Canada. That's what he's been all about. So we're not just talking about doing these things. We have a very clear policy of how we would do that. We know that small and medium-sized businesses are the job creators, yet Stephen Harper gives across-the-board tax cuts to the largest corporations. We would target the job creators, the small, the medium-sized businesses, if there was money available for a tax break, it would go to them as a priority. So these are differences. We've also got a strong difference with the Conservatives and the Liberals on the environment. We strongly believe that young people have enough of a burden already that's economic because we're leaving them a large economic debt. We're leaving them a big social debt because the pensions, for example, a lot of people are coming to retirement without enough to live on. That's a big debt we're leaving them. We're even telling them they have to work to 67, not 65 to retire. But we're also leaving a huge ecological debt. And we talk the same way across Canada. We say that somebody who's making something has to include the price of disposing of the pollution in his product. We call that polluter pay. 
So we don't think that whether you're a small company or a big company, if you're a small company, nobody would accept to see you push your garbage in the river. But if you're a big company, why should you be allowed to push all of your garbage from your production into big rivers that are going to some of the most magnificent lakes in the world? So we're saying that this is a principle, polluter pay, user pay, sustainable development. Our generation should pay for what it's doing now and not leave that on the backs of our kids. That's another big difference between us and the Conservatives. Has the NDP, the federal NDP done some analysis about what happened in BC because uh, in BC it was a sure shot thing people were saying that the NDP is going to form the government but the way the things were projected and as you said that uh, NDP stands for the common person but the kind of uh, talk which was brought forward about the people losing jobs, economy just going back to doldrums if the NDP forms part. So has the NDP uh, learned some lesson from the BC uh, elections and in the future elections which are just two years away? Do you plan to have some other kind of strategy? There's no question uh, that there are a lot of lessons to be learned from the BC experience and if you don't have the courage to look at these things openly, what's going to happen is some of the people who are involved will write their own reports and try to have their own way of explaining things, but if you don't look at it, put all the cards on the table, you won't learn from it. I think there, there are a lot of lessons to be learned. An election campaign has to be a two-stage thing. Push and pull, like you're riding your bike, or an old train where you have to have both actions. So you have to say why there's something wrong with your opponent's policies, and try to draw people towards you at the same time saying what's good about your policies. They forgot one of those two things. The other thing was, it, again, if, if you only have a campaign where you talk about yourself and why you should take it, people won't see the need for change necessarily, even though they might sense it. So you need a combination of, of things. You need a government that's due for change. Stephen Harper's government starts its ninth year uh, at, at Christmas. Uh, that's that's a, a long time to be putting up with the Conservatives. Um, so we're due for change. People are seeing more and more that the NDP represents the possibility of replacing them with a positive change. And you know, there's one other thing. Uh, the Liberals do specialize in telling people what they want to hear, and then they do the opposite once they're elected. They know that with the NDP, they're going to get something solid, reliable, dependable, and based on all of our past performance in the five provinces and one territory where we've been government, they know that we're going to balance the books and that we're going to do very well. As the leader of the NDP, uh, Mr. Mulcair, how uh, confident you are and how uh, what do you feel about the legacy of Jack Layton? How successful you have been carrying that on and reaching the people? I worked five years shoulder to shoulder with Jack Layton across Quebec in particular, which is my home province. I knew that because he was from Quebec, he had, a, he had an understanding of, of the issues in our province that connected with Quebecers on the level of their values, their profound beliefs. That worked. Now we're carrying through on that. When I stand up on an issue of the ability of a member of the community to become a police officer or a soldier wearing a turban, I know that Jack would be proud because he sees us standing up. It's not always going to be the most popular thing, but it's not a popularity contest. Rights are not a popularity contest. It's a question of saying, it doesn't matter what the surveys might say today, if I stand up and I defend rights, people will respect us for that. And that's what we're doing. Jack was a fighter. He always fought. In, you know, he used to have an expression that he used to say, don't let them tell you it can't be done. And we did that fight across Quebec. I was the first person in the history of the party, after 50 years, to get elected in a federal general election in Quebec. And now we have 57 members. So it's a tough job, but you know what? We go after these jobs in politics because all the easy decisions have already been taken. <laughs> right. Coming to the federal government and the policies which have been adopted by the present uh, Harper government, and especially as far as the economy is concerned, and the way they are bloating that to we have taken the Canadians out of the mess and especially G20 countries, G8 countries, we are the best performance economy. What do you have to say about that? I love it when I hear Conservatives say that because it allows me to remind them of one thing. One of the reasons that we did get through better than a lot of those countries is that the Canadian banking system did not deregulate on the same scale that the Americans did. And you know why they didn't deregulate? Because the NDP was there saying hold the anchor tight. The Liberals we're listening to people like Bank President John McCallum, who became one of their key ministers. He was saying, deregulate. Do like the Americans. Let's have more Bear Stearns. Let's have more banks like that. Those are banks that went bankrupt in the wake of the 2008 crisis. So the NDP has always taken a very prudent approach to governing our system in Canada. We know that things exist for the public protection and that they have to be maintained. Liberals and Conservatives 
wanted the same thing in the States. We would have had the same disaster in this, as they saw in the States if the NDP had not been there standing up straight and fighting for the principle. But we also see the same thing, Harpreet, with regard to food inspection. Forty-six million dollars removed from the Canada Food Inspection Agency. What could be more important than making sure that the food that you put on your family's table is safe to eat? Mm -hmm. And yet they're not taking care of that. They ask the companies to fill out reports and send it to Ottawa instead of having people physically inspecting the meat. We're doing the same thing with railway safety. Instead of having people actually there checking the railways, we send in a report. Now we have a lot of accidents across mm -hmm. Canada and it's all related to a deregulation. It doesn't work. These are the old ideas of Margaret Thatcher, of Ronald Reagan. They don't work. We're saying that the government has a role in our lives, a positive role, to make sure that regulations that are there for the public protection and the public interest are actually enforced, and the NDP believes in that, that there's a good positive role for government in our, in our society. And as well as the government is talking about uh, finishing off the deficit and coming up with a balanced budget, and also they're talking to the uh, the debt to uh, de uh, sorry the GDP debt ratio that will bring it down to 25 percent by 2021. Whereas right now, when the assumed par, it was around 34 percent at that time, and it's the same right now. The austerity measures which have been adopted by, as you said, cutting off jobs and uh, not coming forward on the basic things. Do you think this is the right approach? The Conservatives talk a good game when it comes to the economy, but you have to look at the numbers. They've run year over year the largest deficits in Canadian history with very little to show for it. They cut back on the stimulus at the exact wrong time. Our municipalities have 8% of the tax base in Canada yet are responsible for 60% of the infrastructure. That can't continue. The federal government's not doing the things it can and should be doing, and yet they continue to badly spend public money on things like the F-35 which is a, a debacle, it's a, it's a disaster. So the Conservatives are not good public administrators. They're not prudent managers of the public money. That's been proven time and again. The Conservatives talk about the debt to GDP ratio, which by the way, compared to a lot of the other countries in the OECD, is, is absolutely fine. But this notion that austerity is the solution here, that's been proven to be wrong for centuries, mm -hmm. not just decades. It's a, it's a mistaken notion. With regard to balancing the books, I remind you that the best party in Canada is the NDP. That's not my figures, those are figures published by the Finance Department of Canada. The best governments for balanced budgets, for good, prudent administration, NDP. You know why? Because people always look at us the most and we're so careful. Tommy Douglas, same thing, you can't manage 17 balanced budgets in a row in Saskatchewan, but we're in our fourth consecutive majority government in, in Manitoba, people see a government that's taking care of them. That's the type of thing that we'll bring to this good, competent public administration. We're confident in our ability to do that, and Canadians have confidence in us. Towards the end, what would be your message to the South Asians watching this program in Canada? To understand that the NDP is on their side, that the NDP has always been there to listen to. The NDP is going to listen to them and bring a very strong, positive message forward. And we're not afraid to have fights. We stand up for people's rights. We know what principles are, and the NDP under Jack Layton and continuing under my leadership will always remain a party of strong principles that will be defended on behalf of all Canadians. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you.